Hi, everybody. I'm Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Panini and the Widow Recklehouse. And you'll notice I'm a little off center. That's because I didn't want those antennas that I've had for the last few videos. Um, anyway, we're here to talk about centering down. Okay, so if you have a problem with when you're praying, um, you get distracted. This is a really good thing to do. It's just also a really good way of dealing with anxiety. And it's a great way of starting your devotional time. It's also just good just to do throughout the day. Um, I have used this practice since 1980 when I was in college. So I know a lot of you probably weren't even born by then. So it's been around for a long time. Um, it's a Quaker practice. And I learned it from a book called Celebration of Discipline. And I want to just read to you the list of disciplines that are covered in this book, which is a Christian classic. I think it came out in the 1970s. I read it in 1980 for a class. And um, I have been through three copies of it because I just make so many notes in it and everything. And so um, for a while, I was reading it every year so that I could really learn to do these particular disciplines. And when it says celebration of discipline, we're not talking about discipline like, you know, spanking you or <laughs> uh, punishing you for doing the wrong thing or anything like that. These are, these are spiritual disciplines. So for example, prayer, meditation, fasting, study, simplicity, solitude, submission, service, confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. And what is so cool about this particular book, I just want to click this off so I can have a blank screen here. Um, what's so cool about this particular book is that he doesn't just tell you about why you should do this and where it is in the Bible and stuff, although he does do that, but he walks you through step by step so that if you've never even heard of this particular discipline, he will show you how to do it. And within the discipline of prayer, he has centering down. He has other things with prayer too, but he gives you specific instructions. And so I'm not sure if I do it exactly the way that he says, because like I said, I've been doing it for 40 years. So there may be things that I've changed over the years, but I'm going to show you at least how I do it. And I think it's pretty much the same way that he shows you. So the idea is that you are turning over to God anything that's distracting you. And it could be things that you're worrying about. So if you're doing this for anxiety, then what are the things that you're worrying about? If you want to, you can make a list ahead of time. But I, I don't think I've ever made a list. I just, as something comes to mind, then I do it. So you're turning those things over to God. You're giving them to him. You're emptying yourself out of these. And we talked about this um, when I was doing my Easter to Passover study, not Easter to Passover, Easter to Pentecost study. Um, and, and I had that whole section that was on emptying yourself. And so in one of those videos, I talked about this a little bit, but I want to go into more detail for us today. And also specifically because I've been talking to people who are dealing with anxiety. So I, I really feel like there's a need for a video just on centering down. So like I said, you're giving something over to God, something that's worrying you or something that you're struggling with. Um, and then you're receiving from him what he wants to give you to replace it. And basically what you do, um, uh, you could do this without doing like the hand motions and the breathing, but I think that having this physical element to it does help because it gets, it gets your whole body involved. And it's like using, like we've talked about in our right brain, left brain thing, we've talked about um, using different senses and different parts of your body and how involving of all those different ways of learning helps you to make more use of something. It helps, it helps it to click a little bit more, not just in your brain, but in your spirit. And especially when we're dealing with anxiety, breathing exercises help a lot with that. So we're going to have some breathing that goes along with this. So what we're going to do is we're breathing in and out as you're exhaling and you're not praying this out loud because I don't think you could do that while you're breathing in and out. <laughs> That'd be really hard. So that's what's going to be. That's why I'm giving you so much explanation before I show you because I'm not going to be able to do the breathing part because I'm going to be talking, but you're breathing out what you're giving to God and you're breathing in what you're receiving from him. Okay, so you're breathing out in like about four seconds, breathing out, and you're thinking in your mind, Lord, I give you such and such. And I'll give some examples in a little bit. You're breathing in, Lord, I receive from you such and such, or thank you for such and such. And he'll put something in your mind. You'll, you'll, as you breathe something out, 
you'll sense in your mind what it is that you're supposed to be receiving from him. If you don't sense that right away, then that's okay. Then breathe back out and breathe in and receive that from him. Or just, if you can't think, you know, if, if nothing comes to mind, then just say, Lord, I receive whatever you want to give me. Don't get all caught up in it or worried about it. Okay. Um, and what you're going to be doing with your hands is putting your hands down, facing down, and you can just do it on your lap, but you can't see my lap. So you just put your, your hands facing down, saying, Lord, I give you such and such, kind of like you're putting this in his hands. Okay. And then I receive such and such. So you're breathing out. I give you such and such breathing in. I receive such and such. And like I said, I just do it on my lap. In fact, I do it so subtly that I can do it in church and nobody knows that that's what I'm doing. Um, or I can do it at home where I probably put a little bit more into it. Um, I'm not quite as subtle with it because I don't have to worry about other people seeing me or distracting them and having them go, what the heck is she doing or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so that's what you're doing. So, so for example, um, I'm going to show you my hands, but I won't be able to do the breathing. So as you're breathing out, you might say, Lord, I give you my finances. And then you can say, Lord, I receive from you your your provision. Okay, then sometimes what comes to mind is more specific areas of finances, or maybe the next thing is I give to my children because my children are worrying me. But if you say something that's like a, a major area, and then you think of something small within it, go with it. Because whatever is on your heart, whatever you're anxious about, whatever is distracting you, I mean, you could even like if you're sitting out in the garden, and you could say, Lord, I give you this butterfly that's distracting me, but thank you so much, Father, for letting me see the beauty of a blue swallowtail or something like that. Um, just anything that's distracting you, if that's what you're working on is distractions. But usually our distractions when it comes to prayer are anxieties, right? There are things that we're worried about. There are things that we're concerned about, maybe a deadline that we need to meet or something. So Lord, I give you the deadline on the book that I'm writing and I receive from you your peace. I give you the deadline on the book that I'm writing and I receive from you your gifts to finish writing that in time. Lord, I give you my stress over the deadline and I receive your peace. And it's okay if you receive from God the same things over and over. And if the same things keep coming back to you, like a little bit later that you're worried about, you just give those back to God and you receive back from him. And that's one of the things that um, I know I experience a lot is I give something to God. And then I go, no, I'm going to take this back so I can worry about it some more. <laughs> and that's just how it's dumb. But we do that, right? I mean, that's, that's just what we do. And I don't want to say that you're dumb if you're doing that. But I'm just saying, you know, it doesn't make very much sense, right? But we all do it. So just keep giving that to him. When you get to the place where there's nothing coming to your mind anymore, then just sit there and just quietly just wait on the Holy Spirit. And just like maybe say, come, Holy Spirit, come, fill me. Show me what you want to show me today as I read your word. And then I would just sit there for a few moments and just see if, you know, you sense anything that the Lord's trying to tell you and then go ahead and open up his word and start reading. And if you get distracted again while you're reading, then stop, give that thing that whatever that distraction is, give it to him, give it to him with your hands down, breathing out and breathe in and receive whatever it is that he wants to give you in return. The more you read the word, the more you read the Bible, the more you're going to have those things that he wants to give to you. And the more you'll know what he wants to give to you because you'll learn from the Bible. Okay. This is what he wants me to have. He wants me to have peace. He wants me to have trust in his provision. He wants me to have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gratefulness, self-control. I missed something <laughs> temperance and self-control, um, and kindness. There's nine of them. Um, because those are the fruit of the spirit. So, you know, the more that you read the Bible, you know more of what he wants to give you. And so those things are going to come to mind much more quickly. Um, and if you can't think of anything, if nothing comes to mind, then just say, Lord, I receive from you, whatever you want to give me instead of that, because he doesn't want us to have worry. That's something that keeps telling us be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So let's break that down a little bit. Cause I know that 
most of you watching this are probably thinking about anxiety. So don't be anxious for anything. Okay. So St. Paul is telling us there's no reason to be anxious for anything. Don't, don't be anxious for anything. <laughs> I just said it, didn't I? I haven't memorized, but trying to break it down, it's hard to do it. So don't be anxious for anything. Instead, pray for everything. Okay. So we're supposed to bring every single one of those things to God in prayer. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. So when you see those answers, definitely for sure then thank him. But you know what? You can thank him ahead of time because you know he's going to answer. He may not answer the way that you want. If you're saying, Lord, I want a, I don't even know what a modern car is. <laughs> I want a Ram pickup truck. Um, he may answer by giving you a Ram pickup truck or giving you the way to earn the money for a Ram pickup truck. Or he may answer by, providing something else for you or giving you a sense of contentment. In fact, if you feel like God's saying, no, I want you to be content, then Lord, thank you for giving me contentment. Okay. So he may not answer the way that we want, but he answers in the way that we need and that's best for us. We may think that it's best for us to have a Ram pickup. I do not know why that came to mind, you guys. <laughs> I do have a pickup. But it's a Toyota. <laughs> um, he, it may be the best for us to have a ram pickup, but it may not be the best thing for us to have a ram pickup. So he's going to answer not by what we think is best, but what he knows is best for us. And we can trust him in that. And that's part of, of what we want to be receiving from him is faith and being able to trust him and to have the courage and everything else. So, um, and you can do this throughout the day. Anytime that you start feeling anxious, it is a great way to go to sleep. You guys, it's fantastic. I mean, you can just lie there in bed and you've got your arms out, you know, with your palms down and then, you know, and say, Lord, I give you my concerns about this thing happening with my child and then turn your palms up and Lord, I receive from you your contentment or your assurance that you're going to work things out right or that you your protection or whatever i mean it depends on what the situation is okay and you're breathing in and out the breathing in and out itself is going to help you fall asleep but giving those worries over to him because i know i don't know if this is a problem for men but women because we can think of so many things at once men tend to think of one thing at a time they can think of more th than one thing some of them but um did you know that they can actually have their minds blank. I mean, like if you ask a man if he's what he's thinking about and he says nothing, he might actually be telling the truth. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a video about that and I'll link it below. Okay. This is that blows my mind. But women, you know, it's like we we think about a whole bunch of things at one time and we can't stop thinking sometimes at night. Our thoughts are just going 500 million miles an hour. This is a really good way to get those thoughts to stop and to have God's peace. And to be able to go to sleep and the breathing helps with that as well so anyway i hope that this helps you if you have any questions about it if i haven't explained something good enough or if you have like further questions about what like maybe you know like okay what should you receive back from god if you give him such and such you can write those in the notes below and i'll i'll answer those either in the comments or if it's something that i think um would be good for other people to hear that I'll make another video with answers to that. But I think this is a really good practice. It's a very basic and easy practice. And so this is one that I would definitely, definitely add to your spiritual practices. Okay. I love you all. And I will put the link for the book, spiritual disciplines, um, what is it called? Celebration of disciplines. I'll put that in the description below so that you can check that out if you want it is definitely a book worth having that's you know if i was going to say get 10 books that's one of them definitely one of the 10 books that i would tell you to get all right i love you all i'll see you tomorrow bye-bye